Good day everyone! So for today's video, we are going to tackle the lesson about Chapter 6, Innovative Technologies for Assessment Tasks in Teaching and Learning, Lesson 1, ICT and Assessment of Learning. So this topic is, I think, very timely and relevant because, as we all know, the 21st century learners are generally techie savvy and technologies are also widely used in the classroom for assessment, for teaching, and learning. At the end of the lesson, the students are expected to show their knowledge through recognizing the different innovative technologies used in assessment and learning. They should also show their skills through showing mastery in their learning experiences with the use of innovative technologies. For the attitude, the students can develop creative attitude along with creating technology-assisted tools in the assessment of learning. And for the value, the students will know the importance of the use of ICT in assessment of learning. So, I will show to you the flow of our lesson. First, the assessment description. Second, the types of assessment. We have formative assessment, summative assessment, diagnostic assessment, and authentic assessment. Third, we will know the importance and the advantages of the use of ICT in assessment and learning. And lastly, what are the current trends in assessment and learning? So, let us start. So, what do you think is the meaning or definition of assessment? So, assessment refers to the gathering, interpreting information about students' learning. It is also used for the basis for inferences of students' learning, a basis to know the student's development, and to increase students' learning and development. So, in other words, assessment refers to the wide variety of methods or tools that the educators use to evaluate, measure, and document the academic readiness learning progress, skill acquisition, or educational needs of students. The goal of assessment is to gather relevant information about student performance or progress or to determine student interest to make judgments about their learning process. Now, let us move on to our next slide. So our next slide talks about the types of assessment. The first type of assessment is formative assessment. It gives feedback while learning is occurring or while learning is taking place. It helps to recognize where students are struggling and helps to address problems immediately. So the goal of formative assessment is to monitor student learning to provide ongoing feedback that can be used by instructors to improve their teaching and by students to improve their learning. Formative assessments are generally low stakes, which means that they have low or no point value. Examples of formative assessments include asking students to draw a concept map in class to represent their understanding of the topic, submit one or two sentences identifying the main point of a lecture, or turning in a research proposal for early feedback. Now, let us get to know what are some great tools the teachers across the globe are incorporating into classroom practice for the formative assessment process. So first, we have Socrative Teacher. So Socrative is a great tool for formative assessments. Using this tool, teachers can engage whole classroom through various engaging activities. With this free platform, Users can perform various activities like educators can ask short answer questions and reflect student answers the screen. Teachers can also give quick quiz to their students to check their understanding and grade them accordingly. And lastly, teachers can use this platform to get quick paper free response by their students. Our second tool is Gidet. So, GIDET is a platform for one-to-one -one classroom that enables learners to immediate feedback about their knowledge or understanding about a particular topic. 
This feedback is very much necessary for teachers so that they can recognize the needs of their students. The platform also includes multiple choice questions, quizzes, and much more to assess students' understanding. Our third formative assessment tool is Ping Pong. So Ping Pong is a smart tool for communication that facilitates interaction between teachers and students during class. Thus, make lessons more interesting and live. The main features Ping Pong includes essay questions, timer, connect to Evernote, drawing, multiple choice, and random selection of students. Our fourth formative assessment tool is Primary Wall. So, Primary Wall is a free sticky note tool made for schools that enable students and educators to work together in actual time. It is free and there is a six-month welcome period for every new user where they can get limitless wall creation, community support note search, and many more. Our fifth formative assessment tool is the Answer Pad. So the Answer Pad is available both as website and iPad app for free. All educators can get advantage from this tool that enables educators to check understanding of their students in the classroom while teaching. They can also engage students by giving every student a chance to demonstrate what they understand during class time, and this gives positive impacts on learning process. Our last formative assessment tool is Quizlet. So on Quizlet, students can create their own or pick from many flashcard sets available. When you have got your flashcard, you can study games and do multiple choice tests. Users can add image as well as listen audio and perform much more activity. Moving on to our second type of assessment, we have summative assessment. So summative assessment occurs at the end of the unit. It measures students' comprehension at lesson's end and is often measured with a grade or percentage. The goal of summative assessment is to evaluate student learning at the end of an instructional unit by comparing it against some standard or benchmark. Summative assessments are often high stakes, which means that they have a high point value. In contrast to the formative assessments, summative assessments require clear expectations and timelines to be set to give students the best opportunity to succeed. Teachers use rubrics or assessment criteria to ensure students understand what to expect in any such test. The results of summative assessments are usually significant, used to determine whether a student passes a unit or even a class. Summative assessment includes a midterm exam, a final project, a paper, and a senior recital. Next, our third type of assessment is diagnostic assessment. So these are considered pre-test and it measures students' knowledge on an upcoming topic. The components of a diagnostic assessment includes happen at the beginning of a unit, lesson, quarter, or period of time. The goal is to understand students' current position to inform effective instruction. It identifies trends and areas of improvement for the students, and it is also considered as low-stakes assessment, which means that it is usually do not count as a grade. Examples of diagnostic assessment At the beginning of a unit on ancient Greece, a teacher may give a pretest to determine if the class knows the basic geography, history, or culture. The class responses will determine where the teacher begins and how much time is dedicated to certain topics. The last type of assessment is authentic assessment. So an authentic assessment is one that requires application of what students have learned to a new situation and that demands judgment to determine what information and skills are relevant and how they should be used. According to Grant Wiggins, an assignment is authentic if it is realistic, requires judgment and innovation, asks the students to do the subject, replicates or simulates the context in which adults are tested in the workplace or in civic or personal life, 
assesses the student's ability to efficiently and effectively use a repertoire of knowledge and skills to negotiate a complex task, and it allows appropriate opportunities to rehearse, practice, consult resources, and get feedback on unrefined performances and projects. Examples of authentic assessment includes general areas. So in general areas, Students are increasingly being involved in authentic learning and assessment tasks that are typically but not exclusively set in such work integrated contexts as professional education programs, authentic clinical production or research contexts, application and problem solving with preclinical concepts and laboratory work, professional internships throughout a range of disciplines, and cross disciplinary integration. Second, scenarios can require students to do the following. Notice what is important, explain it using theoretical concepts of the course, and plan and theoretically justify an intervention. Third, portfolios require the students to do the following. Understand and internalize the learning outcomes of a unit of study, and plan their own set of activities that will generate validated evidence of their performance, capability, and skill mastery. Fourth, we have writing for publication. So writing a journal article or short story for publication can be extended to requiring students to form editorial panels, review the work produced, and undertake full responsibility for producing a publication. For example, an edited collection of papers. Lastly, designing a solution. So designing a solution to a real community or workplace problem and presenting the solution to its intended audience can be a very engaging activity for students. It can be combined with learning to conduct small-scale research and surveys of contemporary issues that are published in a report for a specific audience and analyzing wicked problems entails considering authentic, complex problems, any solutions to which will create other problems. So, the importance of the role of ICT in assessment and learning includes with the use of ICT, examinations results can be easily recorded, can be easily stored and retrieved, and there is an immediate feedback to students' assessment results, and it provides higher-level thinking skills. So, the advantages in the role of ICT in assessment and learning helps teachers become digital teachers. Students can also become digital learners and workers. It promotes accessibility and flexibility. Time management, it is safe and helps in statistical analysis. So the first trend in assessment and learning is flexible delivery. The second is engaging assessment. The third, automation and the candidate-centric focus. Fourth, the holistic measurement. So many aspects of big picture student performance aren't easily captured by traditional testing like high-order thinking, interpersonal development, problem-solving abilities, and deep learning. And to address this, the use of the ICT in the classroom are already starting to change the way teachers ask questions, pose problems, assign projects to the student. Fifth is the real-time data-driven insights. So tools that automate analysis provide results for mountains of data in real-time meaning teachers can make adjustments based on what's happening right now instead of what happened weeks or months ago. Sixth trend is tailored learning. So as we capture more and more student data from classroom performance to assessment outcomes, the end goal is to truly tailor instruction based on what a student knows, assess what they are ready to learn next, or where they need help and provide individualized support to get there. The last trend in assessment and learning is the shifts in scoring. As they shift student work towards demonstration and project-based learning, they are also replacing traditional methods of evaluation with rubrics that defines a set number of criteria all focused on quality. We should not forget what David Warwick said that we need technology in every classroom and in every student and teacher's hand because it is the pen and paper of our time and it is the lens through which we experience much of our world.
Thank you.